All right, guys. So once you have everything set up on your content filter, I'll explain why we're using a content filter and using a firewall because I know a lot of people are probably confused. But most corporations, your content filters on one side and then you have a uh, firewall on the other side. And the purpose is the content filter already knows which websites you cannot use and you cannot log into uh, because like you saw before we checked off like pornographic websites ad websites and then the firewall can also have what they call a weighing system and what it does is that it goes to the website reads the code reads the words that are on the page and try to weigh out against uh certain keywords that are already built into the system on if it should let you have access so if it sees too many words that are pornographic or too many words that might allude to that the site has viruses on it it will be blocked but the problem is the person has to get to the site first for it to get blocked if you have a content filter which is what we just set up the site is already blocked before users even have a chance to get out to the internet and get to it so to get your firewall you want to go to clearfoundation.com go to your software link down to downloads and you're going to get to this screen now the professional version is normally used for businesses education nonprofit government blah 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 the um that comes with uh support and things of that nature we're going to use the community version because we're using this for a small business or a home you'll be fine uh 32 bit or 64 bit i prefer 64 because we deployed a 64 bit content filter so go ahead and download whichever one's your favorite and after that join me over here on your virtual box once it's finished downloading so assuming that it's done we're going to go ahead and click new and i'm going to type clear os linux I'm just going to pick 64-bit Ubuntu, no big deal. Next. Now, this is going to be a little more resource intensive, which is why I uh, said you're going to need so much memory on the machine. So I'm going to give it about a gig and a half. Next. Going to do a virtual drive. Yep. Same thing. Same thing that we had before. Like I said, it's resource intensive. We're going to bump that up to about 30 gigs. Hit create. All right, now it's done. Now we got to do two things. Firstly... We're going to make sure to add the CD drive. So we're going to do the same thing we did before. Choose the disk. I'm going to select that. But then we have to go over to the network area here. And we're going to have to add, make sure this is in bridge mode, and add one more network adapter. Because remember, content has to flow in and flow out. Now that that's been created, we're going to hit the old start button. And just close that out. And we're going to do the installation with a small screen because we have limited uh, resolution on the screen that I have right now. And it's going to go ahead and extract all the files from the ISO that I just downloaded. You gotta skip this part because you don't need to really test the CD. Alright, now you're gonna hit next. Next again. Next again, you're just selecting languages, no big deal. You do basic storage. Now this part I have to stress to so make sure to put this in. Uh, I'm just going to do clear OS, uh, put a zero at the end of it, dot test dot local. You want to make sure you put in the name of the device first, dot whatever your domain is going to be called. So it could be your last name, some random name, but always end it with dot local. Never put in any of these extra things like people put dot com or dot net or anything of that nature. Do not do that. Click next and next again put the same password that you put in on your smooth wall that way you don't have to memorize a whole group of, of uh, passwords and stuff hit next write the changes All right and go ahead and just let that run and I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just jump ahead so the next thing you're gonna see is the complete screen so pause the video and Give yourself a chance to, I guess, you know, do your installation on your end. Trust me, it takes about 15, 20 minutes, so it's going to be a little bit. All 
All right, now it's done. So go ahead and click the reboot button. And it's simply just going to reboot the operating system for you. And I can't stress this enough. You want to make sure that you put those network um, adapters on there correctly. If not, you have to redo this entire installation process. All right. Now, just a little point of reference. Um, this little preview window here for your virtual box, it's pretty cool because you can actually get a quick glimpse like this is at a um, screensaver mode. I can go over here. I can see this one's on Google and I can see this one's loading. Um, when you're you know, and you're in the middle of working on these things, it's good to be able to just see a quick snapshot glance of what's working and what's not. Just something I just like to bring up. Anyways, time has passed long enough, and now we are logged into our ClearOS. Now, one of the main reasons why I truly love ClearOS is it is highly customizable, and on top of that, it can be done straight through a regular internet browser. Now, here is the network addresses and everything that it came up with. We're going to go to the network console. We're going to log in with the username root and the password. Now the IP address that it chose is actually an IP address that is from my actual network, not the network that I've created for us to do the testing on. So we're just going to make some few changes here. So this is a DHCP. There's the host name, this is your external, and let's see here, cancel that. I'm sorry, we're going to do static, and we're going to do 192.168. Dot, and I just want to verify by going on to this guy here. Uh, let's see, show. and it's 35 just as I thought so we're gonna give it 35 and I'm gonna give it the IP address of 22 sorry dot 22 and the gateway is 192.168.35.1 and what that's gonna tell it to do is to actually look at the smooth wall that we just created as a content filter um, to get onto the internet. So I'm going to click the old update button here. It's going to do its thing. It's changing it from DHCP, making it static, changing this around. Okay, we should be good to go here. And we're going to change this as well. 35.1 update. Perfect. And log out. Okay, now we should be able, because you see it says 3522, I should be able to go to my test machine. Let me minimize this guy here. I should be able to go onto my test machine, which is this. And don't forget, your test machine is essentially going to be the computer you're actually doing all the work on. I'm just using a test machine just so you guys can see um, how it works without editing everything on my network. So on your test browser, 192. 168.35.22 colon 81 if memory serves me correctly okay so you get bad requests https there we go after putting in https you're going to get this thing here click I understand the risk add the exception and confirm once you confirm, boom, you get the login screen. Now from this login screen is where you configure everything. So you type root and your password. And here you go, your installation guide gets getting started guide. So from here you click next. And it's going to not be, you can do public server here, private server here. You're going to use as a uh, gateway because other company or other computers are going to get to it. Um, next, 
From here, this is the stuff we already configured, so that should be fine. Next. And we're going to put the Google DNS here, 8.8.8.8.8. And 8.8.4.4. Next. It's going to do a quick look up on the DNS servers to make sure everything's working. It means it works fine. Thank you for choosing. We're going to do the community version. Hit next. It's going to check for any software updates. Like I said, ClearOS is very good. It's going to check for the software updates through a web browser. You don't need any applications. It's all going to be done through a web browser. So it shows that we have these updates that are available. Okay. Hit next. And the updates are actually going to be loaded down on this machine. It's the same thing when you are doing the installation on this machine. Is um, as I was saying, when you do your your, your uh, uh, updates on the machine, normally you would do the same thing. You log in to the Clear OS. It's going to say, "Hey, there's some updates due," and you just select your updates and you keep moving. Okay, installation is complete. So now we get to move on to the next area here. Systems registration. And you can put in an account. Um, you can create the account here. So we're going to tell it that it's a home office. The account we're going to do. Let's see. Tester 1234. Password. Okay, so uh, obviously tester one two three four is already taken. I'm gonna do Odeon forty five. That's the name of the system, and create the account. Okay. Whoops. Let me take that hyphen off the back of it. This is standard registration stuff. Okay, accounts been created. select the environment home and you want to register your system boom registered so now remember I said you can log in remotely and check it out you can go to that URL right there and as long as you have your you know password that I just put in for my account I can put in my username and password select this machine and then configure it remotely So I'm just going to do test.local, host name, exact same thing we had before, time and date, same thing. It's going to keep it synchronized for you, no problem. Now from here is where you can do the app selection. We're going to skip this part because I'm going to do a whole section on how to do the apps installation after the fact. So we're going to do next. And you're done. You are set up. You are ready to go. So we're going to do another video after this on how to configure. And after we set up how to configure, basic troubleshooting guides, and you should be set. But hope you found this very helpful. Uh, feel free to send me any messages that you like on the Udemy board there, and I'll be more than happy to answer any questions. But as you can see, it's pretty straightforward.